Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so let's start at a blank slate and derive the cubic formula. Yes, have you heard of the quadratic formula? Well, just like we have a quadratic formula, we have a cubic formula. So this is quite an exciting video. Um, and um, it's actually quite easy deriving the cubic formula. And I'm not just going to show you how to derive it, but also provide you an example of how we'd use the cubic formula. So here goes. So let's consider a standard cubic, which is, you know, written in this form, right? Okay. All right. Now we can do what's called depressing the cubic. And so we can do this to every cubic. We can depress the cubic using the substitution. And I believe this is called Cardano's method. Um, but I'm not much of a math historian. I'm more into the math than I am into like the stories of mathematicians. I think everyone's story is pretty interesting. <laughs> so mathematicians are not unique in that way. Anyway, with the substitution, x equals y minus b over 3, right? Uh, x cubed would have to become this. And that's just like, you know, cubing this x and therefore having to cube this right hand side. That is doing y minus b over 3 cubed you'd get all this, yeah? And then similarly, squaring x, uh, we'd get this. And obviously, we want to find x cubed and x squared based on this substitution because, well, what we're going to do is substitute for this x cubed here, this x squared, and of course, we already have our substitution for x handy. It's y minus b over 3. Okay, and so then uh, substituting all three uh, guys that I just mentioned into the standard cubic, uh, we can write this here which is at the standard cubic we started off with will transform to this now yes i skipped a bunch of monotonous algebra but why did i skip it because it's monotonous um it's not really of great value now um the fact that we are able to take a standard cubic that has four terms and depress it and get this here means that we only really need to consider cubics of the form x cubed plus some constant times x plus some other constant. That is, we only need to consider um, cubics like this. Now, if um, some of you are confused about like, you know, switching from these y's to these x's here, well, that's not a big deal because we could have started the cubic here written um, where in place of x we have like, you know, whatever other letter you want. And so then by the time you depress it, then we can make these guys um, the y's x's, right? So if we'd used instead of an x to start, if we'd used a different letter on the writing of the standard cubic, then by the time we get here, we can make these guys x's. So basically, it's just renaming variables, no big deal. But this here is clearly in this form, right? That's what's important. And more importantly, you should understand that with such a substitution, we can depress every cubic and take it from this form to this form. Yeah. And that's why we're saying since we can do this to every cubic, which is depress it from the standard form to this form. Yes, we can depress cubics, not just people. Um, yeah, but because we can do this, we only really need to consider cubics of this form because, well, if they're not of this form, first depress them, make them sad like all of us. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now, starting with this depressed cubic, uh, let's uh, break it into two cases. One where P is equal to zero and another where P is not equal to zero. Well, if P is equal to zero, then it's quite simple because then we'd move the Q to the other side to get this X cubed equals negative Q and negative Q is some complex number. And yes, I'm calling it a complex number because even real numbers are complex numbers, right? And then we know that every complex number and therefore even real numbers have three cube roots. Yeah, so what we can do is, well, um, find the three cube roots that would solve this here. And so we'd have three complex roots. And again, even if some of them are real, real numbers are complex numbers. And that's why I'm saying three complex roots. Yeah, okay, now uh, I'll um, elaborate on this a little bit. So an example of a cubic where P is equal to zero would be like X cubed plus one. Now, remember, X cubed plus one, you can factor using sum of cubes. And so it would factor as X plus one times um, X squared minus X plus one. Now, the latter, the quadratic X squared minus X plus one will have two uh, imaginary roots. 
and then of course from um, x plus 1 you get one real root so in total you have three roots but all of them are complex because well we just said real numbers are complex numbers right okay uh, but um, when p is not equal to 0 we have a lot more work to do but it's still fun so um, keep going right <laughs> all right all right all right so when p is not equal to 0 right um, let's make this substitution and this substitution of course we're going to make uh, and this depressed cubic, right? Okay, cool. So uh, with this substitution, then we can transform this here, the depressed cubic, into looking like first, like this, right? Um, and all I've done is, you know, in place of x here, I've substituted u minus p over 3u. That's the substitution we suggested. And likewise over here, um, right in terms in place of x i've put that there and now all we have left to do is boring algebra and simplifying so zero equals well after a little bit of simplifying we get this but even more simplifying actually cleans it up really nicely and we could just reduce it to this now um this here right uh can be written and again it's a little bit of algebra to see that it can be written like this all i've done is in this part um I have multiplied both sides by 27u cubed, right? And rearranged the terms here after multiplying both sides of this equation by 27u cubed. And if you do that, then you get this here. Now notice that this is quadratic and u cubed because it's like of the form, well, you see it, you see it. I don't think I need to say more. So like if u cubed is a, this says 27a squared plus uh, 27 Q a minus uh, P cubed and therefore it's quadratic and U cubed um, I just named the quadratic in terms of a where a is again U cubed yeah so then we can use the quadratic formula to solve for a meaning solve for U cubed and if we do we're gonna get this now this simplifies quite nicely yeah for example like if you know we uh, break this into uh, two uh, rational expressions over the plus and minus sign then the first part will be like negative 27 Q over 2 times 27. So the 27s will cancel. It'll just be negative Q over 2. Yeah. And so doing similar uh, simplifying, we can write uh, the right hand side of U cubed like this. Yeah. OK. I already kind of like walked you through the first part and that's that. OK. So U cubed is this now. Yeah. Notice then that we could say that U cubed um, is in this form which is u cubed is of the form negative q over 2 plus r, where r is the square root of this here. And yes, the square root of this here is why we have plus or minus. So I can simply say r is the square root of uh, what's inside of the square root, right? And then I could just, you know, change this to a plus because the square root of what's inside the square root is why we're writing the plus or minus. In other words, the square root of um, in other words, the square root of this here will come both with a plus and a minus. That's why I just wrote plus R. So R is both the square root of this, both the plus and the minus. Yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. And so then, so then we see that, um, U is going to be the cube root of this here, right? That's just taking the cube root on both sides of this equation here or this equation here where again we're mindful that r is plus or minus the square root of this yeah okay so take the cube root of both sides of this being mindful of what we said about r and you'd get this yeah okay 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 cool now uh if we take this u uh then uh we have six different possible values of u uh why you ask because earlier we said that um Every complex number has three cube roots. And so then um, the complex number that would be this here, right, which is uh, negative Q over 2 plus R, that complex number will have three cube roots. But we have this plus or minus, and that's why we have six possible values of U. Because if we just had the plus, then what's inside of the cube root here with just a plus well, would have three cube roots, and then with just a minus, we'll have three cube roots. So that's a total of six possible values of u. But when we substitute back uh, for u right here and right here to get x, 
it turns out that the six possible uh, values of u actually lead to only three possible values of x. So this is what I'm saying. So when we substitute the u back to solve for x, which equals, based on the substitution we made earlier, u minus p over 3u, we get only three values of um, x. And so like it turns out that um, the fact that we had six possible values of u uh, doesn't have an impact. So um, I suppose I should say that like this is uh, not three possible values of u, but three possible values of x right here. Yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. 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 Um, all right. So then notice that we are done finding uh, this uh, cubic formula because, well, we have x equals this and we have u equals the cube root of all this stuff. So if we just replace uh, the u here and the u here, with this right hand side, then we've got x all in terms of p and q from the depressed cubic. And so you depress your cubic and then plug it into the cubic formula, which is this. Yeah. And again, this here, uh, this giant formula, it's not that big, right? But this giant formula, right, is just replacing this u here and this u here with what we just discovered it was before I like displayed <laughs> this giant thing over it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. So this is the cubic formula and um, uh, the video of the same stuff um, where I don't talk over it, but rather I play like the anthem to my life, Lindsay Sterling's crystallize, right? I have, um, this is the cubic formula and then this is the cubic formula right here. I was really excited, but I'm not as, ex as excited now because well, okay. Um, yeah, you get it. You get it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, 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 so. Uh, where to? Well, how about an example? And this example illustrates how complex numbers are vital when you're dealing with the uh, cubic formula. And in particular, even when your cubic has three real real roots, Jesus Christ, I can't speak. So uh, even when your cubic has three real roots, uh, complex numbers invariably uh, come into play uh, when applying the cubic formula. Yeah. Okay. You want to see? Well, this is a familiar cubic. And I say it's a familiar cubic because when I taught you about the rational root theorem, we used this cubic and found using the rational root theorem, all three roots of this cubic. And the three roots of this cubic are these guys, four and then negative two plus root three and then negative two minus root three. Yeah. Okay. And just like complex numbers, these guys come um, in conjugate pairs. And that's from the conjugate root theorem, which I have uh, a video on. I proved the conjugate root theorem in a different video. So check that out. But yeah, uh, the three uh, roots are these three guys. And notice that they are all real roots, all three of them. But in applying the cubic formula on this to get to these three real roots, we end up using complex numbers. And this is what I mean. Well, notice that in this cubic, P is negative 15 and then Q is negative 4, right? So if we plug right into the cubic formula using the P and the Q that I just said, and the cubic formula maybe you haven't memorized yet, so it's right here. Let me remind you. But yeah, if we just substitute the P's and Q's, then this is what we're going to get. But notice in this part, we have 4 minus 125, which is negative 121. Uh, and that's an imaginary number because the negative 121 is inside the square root. So it's a complex number, right? So, so, so I'm saying if we simplify this a little, we get this. And so then, um, you know, after seeing this to be uh, 11i, the square root of negative 121, seeing it as 11i, we see that in this part and in this part, we have to do the cube root of 2 plus 11i. Now, I already said every complex number has three cube roots right okay and so then um, the best way to find those three cube roots uh, is to use de Morve's theorem right de Morve's theorem is a very good way uh, to find uh, complex roots right okay all right um, roots uh, for complex numbers whether they're cube roots or square roots and so on right so you could do that but here I kind of have a nice like observation we can use to find the cube root of uh, 2 plus 11 I and that is notice that 2 plus i cubed is 2 plus 11 i. So that's to say that one cube root of uh, 2 plus 11 i has got to be 2 plus i because clearly 2 plus i cubed is this here. Yeah. Okay. Now, so then 
using the one cube root of two plus 11 I, namely two plus I, we can substitute for this here and this here with uh, two plus I and uh, see that uh, we get, first let's state the obvious that I just mentioned, we get this here, right? And this here again is just replacing this cube root of two plus 11 I with uh, one of the cube roots that we now know is two plus I right there, right? And then two plus I um, replacing this times three is gonna be six plus three I, right? And um, if we simplify this, look at what we're gonna get, ha ha ha, really cool. So uh, simplifying it, of course, means multiplying by the conjugate of this top and bottom in this part, and that's what I've done here. But yeah, look, 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 look. Um, we get there after a little bit more simplifying, and then four, yeah? So there it is. That's one of the um, roots that we already stated from the get-go of this cubic, right? Now to find the other uh, two roots, this guy and this guy, you have to use the other two cube roots of um, 2 plus 11i. So the other cube roots of 2 plus 11i are going to get you these two guys. Also, very important, notice that uh, in the um, cubic formula, we have plus or minus here and plus or minus here. And I only used um, the uh, plus, see right there and right there. I only used the plus. And so uh, that's how you avoid the redundancy of the u values that we mentioned earlier. We said that there are six possible values of u. Well, one way to avoid the six and just to have the three that end up giving you the three roots that you want is like basically to elect either the plus or the minus consistently here and here. Yeah, cool. All right. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. And uh, yeah, keep watching. Take care.